Hi candidates, welcome to another session of Manifested Online Classes. Uh, we are still continuing with the topic of uh, group account and uh, in this uh, session I want us to look on uh, another concept of group accounts and uh, the concept is uh, changes in group structure or disposal of uh, interest. So when we talk about the disposal of interest or basically changes in uh, group structure, this whereby the parent company uh, will sell uh, all the shares held in a subsidiary or basically sell part of the shares and retain some of the shares held in such what a subsidiary. So therefore uh, what we're going to uh, to do here is uh, we're going to look on how to prepare the group account uh, whenever there is changes in the group what uh, structure or basically we have now the disposal of what of interest but before we even do that we can uh, have an introduction to this and we say <coughs> that uh, changes in a group a structure, in group structure a occurs when the parent a company a sells the whole or part of a shares, whole or part of a whole or part of a shareholding shareholding in the subsidiary company in the subsidiary a subsidiary company so basically that what we refer is the disposal of interest so the parent company here uh, will sell some of the shares or basically all the shares uh, which are held uh, in what which are held uh, in a subsidiary company now generally the disposal of interest uh, can be broadly classified into two main categories first of all we have uh, what we far as a full disposal a full disposal is whereby the parent company uh, sells all the shares uh, which are held in a subsidiary that is um, a full disposal but on the other hand we have a, a partial disposal uh, whereby the parent company sells some of the shares held in a subsidiary and retain some of the shares retain some of the of the shares so therefore here we can talk of uh, <coughs> Uh, types of uh, disposal of interest types of disposal of uh, interest so when we say there are two types of this we say disposal of interest of uh, interest can either uh, be number one we have the, the full disposal, the full disposal, and then we have the partial disposal, the partial what? A disposal. But um, in accordance with the International Financial Reporting Standard number three, a disposal of interest uh, basically occurs when the parent company loses control. So me that uh, once the parent company sells some of the shares uh, which are held in a subsidiary company and the parent company now loses control so me that uh, the shares which will be held by the parent company in the subsidiary uh, falls below 50, uh, 51 percent so actually from um 50 percent to zero that is the time uh, the disposal is deemed to have uh, occurred in accordance with ifrs3 in which case then the parent company is required to determine something called the gain or loss on disposal so therefore the gain or loss on disposal basically is determined when the parent company loses a uh, control so therefore we can say <coughs> uh, according to ifrs3 according to I FRS3 International Financial Reporting Study number three disposal of uh, interest disposal of uh, interest uh, occurs uh, when the parent uh, company loses control when the parent company loses control the parent company uh, loses what loses control so basically what that means is that <coughs> the shares now which are uh, retained by the parent company the subsidiary or basically uh, the parent company will sell some of the shares and retain shares which are less than 51 percent 
less than 51%. So that is the time the disposal uh, takes place. And in such a case, then we are saying the parent company should proceed and determine the gain or the loss on disposal. What is important, therefore, to note uh, as far as that point is concerned is that if the parent company has retained a control, when we talk about retaining a control, this whereby we can be told a limited uh, which held 80% of the ordinary shares issued by B, the parent company we can be told like sold, sold like 20% of the shares. 20% of the shares. What does that mean? It means that the parent company has retained 60% uh, of the shares in what? In B. In such a case, you can see the parent company is still having a control because we said uh, a company uh, or an investor company will have a control of the investee whereby the shares uh, held by the investor company in the investee company lies between 51% to 100%. So, but you are saying uh, disposal in accordance with IFRS 3 occurs any time the parent company loses control. It sells some of the shares here and retain shares which are now less than uh, which are less than 51% from 50% to zero. In which case we are saying a gain or a loss on disposal should be what? <coughs> should be determined. And therefore you can say uh, when disposal of interest disposal of uh, interest of interest uh, occurs occurs that is uh, when the parent company loses control parent company loses a uh, control again or loss on disposal uh, should be computed or should be determined should be uh, and determined, we can say should be determined as follows. So, how do we compute that particular gain or loss on disposal of interest? <clears throat> so, gain or loss on disposal of uh, interest. Disposal of interest. So, to determine this gain or loss on disposal of interest, number one, we take the fair value of uh, purchase consideration received purchase consideration received so when the parent company sold <coughs> uh, some of the shares or basically all the shares in a subsidiary how much amount was received by the parent company so that is now what refers the fair value of purchase consideration received to this we add the fair value of uh, investment which has been ret retained fair value of investment which has been retained. When talk about uh, the fair value of the investment which has been retained, so this basically applies in case of a partial disposal whereby the parent company has not sold all the shares in a subsidiary. If for example, the uh, A Limited, which is the parent, uh, which initially had acquired 80% shareholding in B, which is a subsidiary, uh, if for example, it, the parent company sells, like uh, half of these shares sells 40% of the shares held here, it means that the parent company has retained uh, a shareholding which is equal to 40%. So at the date the disposal took place, the remaining investment will have to be revalued at its fair value. And always that figure will be provided to you. That's what we refer to as the fair value of the investment retained. So after adding those two figures, we come here and we less Number one, uh, the fair value of uh, net assets, fair value of net assets held at date of disposal, at date of disposal. So the fair value of the net asset held at the date of disposal. And then to this, we also add the parent company and impaired goodwill the parent company an impaired goodwill an impaired goodwill and uh, after deducting those two figures uh, we can get a positive figure here if a positive figure that is a gain but if a negative figure this is 
uh, a loss on disposal a loss on disposal a loss on disposal yes so this is basically how the the gain or loss on disposal is uh, determined anytime the parent company has lost the, the control. The parent company sells some of the shares held in a subsidiary and therefore it retains shares uh, which are less than 51% from 50% to zero. Always in such a case we compute the gain <coughs> or loss on what? The gain or loss on disposal. So um, then next uh, we can proceed and look on how we prepare the consolidated financial statement anytime we have uh, changes in in the group structure so let's look on the preparation of uh, group accounts so and in this case we are going to look on how we prepare the group accounts uh, and uh, different uh, types of uh, disposal so remember you have said that uh, disposal of interest can be broadly classified into two Partial disposal and the full word disposal. Let's start with the the full disposal. The full disposal. A full disposal generally is whereby the parent company sells all the shares held in a subsidiary. Sells all the shares held in a subsidiary. Maybe first of all, you can say that this is a, a whole uh, a whole word disposal or basically a whole a sale of uh, shares of shares in a subsidiary a subsidiary so a wholesale of shares in a in a subsidiary company <coughs> subsidiary a company and this one uh, is basically governed by this one is uh, governed by uh, IFRS 5. So basically in terms of how the parent company should treat that particular subsidiary which has been free disposed, that should be accounted for in accordance with IFRS 5, meaning that uh, that subsidiary now will be uh, will be termed or basically will be referred to as um, a discontinued operation. A discontinued operation assuming we are told A Limited had acquired 80% shareholding in uh, B Limited and the parent company sells all these shares, sells all these shares. So if that is the case, then this particular subsidiary is a discontinued operation, is a discontinued operation, and should be accounted for in accordance with what? In accordance with IFRS 5. So what IFRS 5 requires is that uh, the, the parent company <coughs> should, number one, determine the gain or loss on disposal. And number two, the parent company should determine the gain or loss uh, reported by that uh, discontinued operation. And that one should be recognized, uh, or those two items, the gain or loss on disposal of interest, the gain uh, not the gain rather, the profit or loss from the discontinued operation, they should be recognized as separate items in the consolidated uh, income what a uh, statement. So therefore, uh, we can say in this case, in this uh, case, the parent entity, the parent entity or basically company should uh, determine or in other terms compute determine number one uh, the gain or loss on disposal the gain or loss on disposal of interest and number two the profit or loss the profit or loss <coughs> from discontinued operation from we can abbreviate this as DO from discontinued operation. Discontinued operation. And you are saying that these two items, <coughs> uh, that is uh, the gain or loss on disposal and the profit or loss from discontinued operation, uh, this should be recognized. This should be recognized as a separate line items items in 
consolidated statement of a profit or loss should be recognized as separate line items in the consolidated statement of profit or loss uh, let's uh, maybe from our group structure here we introduce uh, another company here that is uh, c limited we also assume that the parent company had a shareholding of uh, 75 percent so and also we are told that the parent company that is a had 80 percent shareholding in b limited but you're told during the current financial year the parent company sold all the shares held in b so we have said b is a discontinued operation so therefore when a limited is preparing the consolidated income statement the consolidated uh, income statement or the consolidated statement of a uh, profit or loss profit or loss profit or loss so the parent the parent company should first of all determine the profit or loss from the continuing operations so the continuing operations will be the parent company and the nc because you have said this one is a discontinued operation so therefore the parent company should determine what um the profit or uh, the loss from continuing operations continuing operations continuing operations include a and uh, c and for the parent company to do that uh, basically uh, in this case we take the revenue of uh, this that is a plus the revenue of c and then we also take the expenses including the cost of sales of a plus that of c plus that of c we less that now from the revenue we get whatever you get here will be the profit or loss from from continuing operations continuing operations continuing operations and then we are saying that these two items here should be added to the profit or loss from the continuing operations so then we have uh, the discontinued operations discontinued operations this continued operation basically you have said is this subsidiary which has been disposed so two items will be included here the gain or loss on disposal of interest uh, and you have to recall that this one is uh, computed using uh, that particular approach there or that particular format there <coughs> and then we also have the profit or loss from discontinued operations so how do we determine this uh, a profit or loss from discontinued operation so we take the revenue of this company for example the parent company sold uh, the shares held in b limited for example uh, six months uh, from the start of the current financial year so in that case you take the revenue of b for the first six months um, and also its expenses for the first six months and then determine the profit or even the loss uh, which was reported by that subsidiary b which was fully disposed you'll get the profit or loss from the discontinued operation so if it's a profit you add if it's a loss we do what we less here we less and then uh, we add that now to the profit or loss from the continuing operations and then we get the profit for the year the profit for the year so that's basically how we deal with the what if far as a full disposal a full disposal and basically remember these uh, these these are price uh, in preparation of a consolidated uh, statement of a profit or loss consolidated statement of a profit or loss so basically uh, when now preparing the consolidated statement of a financial position um at the end of the year the parent company will have free, will have fully disposed its shares in this subsidiary so the parent company will not be having any control equally there will be no nci so therefore we can say that uh, when preparing this consolidated statement of financial position uh, uh, we can say uh, there will be no nci or basically you can say uh, assets and uh, liabilities liabilities of a uh, subsidiary 
fully disposed fully disposed are not included in consolidated statement of a financial position so the assets and liabilities of that subsidiary will not be included in the consolidated statement of financial uh, position and equally as far as that subsidiary is concerned there will be no NCI the minority shareholders will not be entitled to share the net asset of that subsidiary as at the end of what of there that basically how we deal with the uh, uh, what you far as a full disposal then uh, from there we have <coughs> the other type of uh, disposal the other type of disposal Rem recall in our case here we have said that we have two types of uh, <coughs> uh, disposal the full disposal and the partial disposal the partial disposal partial disposal now here we have different uh, types of um, partial disposal actually we can say we have different scenarios of uh, partial disposal uh, number one uh, number one or number a we have uh, what if far as a, a a disposal of a company which was initially a subsidiary and which still remains a subsidiary which still remain what a subsidiary a subsidiary company to a subsidiary so when talk about a subsidiary to a subsidiary this whereby we can be told the parent company had uh, like 80 percent shareholding in b limited and the parent company for example sold sold 20 percent of the shares so if it sold 20 percent of the shares then it means that uh, the parent company here retained retained uh, 60 percent retained 60 percent so therefore you can see b limited still remain what remain uh what remain a subsidiary so <clears throat> when it comes to preparing a consolidated income statement what you do you take the revenue and expenses of that subsidiary you add to that of the parent actually that disposal do not have any effect as as far as the comp uh, preparation of the consolidated statement of profit or loss is concerned on the other hand uh, when preparing the consolidated statement of financial position because this company is still a subsidiary at the end of the year you take its asset and liabilities you add to those of the of the parent actually uh, this particular type of partial disposal do not have uh, um, any effect as far as the preparation of the group account is, is concerned it's also important to note that here because the parent company is not losing control is not losing control uh, no gain or loss on disposal of interest is computed this one is not computed because you have said we only compute that one anytime the parent company loses loses what control so we can say no uh, gain or loss on disposal of interest <coughs> on disposal of interest disposal of uh, interest so that is it about uh, that scenario of uh, partial disposal so the other type of uh, partial disposal uh, part b is a disposal uh, which makes a company which was initially a subsidiary to be an associate associate or a joint arrangement a joint arrangement so first of all you have to recall uh, from what you have discussed in our previous sessions that um, investment in associate investment in joint arrangement should be accounted for in the same same way um, using the equity method that is something first of all you have to recall and that's why you can see here we are talking of associate or the joint arrangement at one point so this whereby uh, we, as we assume that uh, the current financial year was ending on 31st of December 2023 uh, that is the, the date of consolidation when the group accounts are supposed to be prepared meaning that the year started on 1st of uh, January 2023 we may be told that the parent company initially had acquired like uh, 80 percent of the shares uh, 80 percent of the shares like maybe a limited had initially acquired 80 percent shareholding in b limited some time back but during the current financial year maybe on 1st of july 2023 
the parent company uh, sold or disposed 40 percent or half of these shares so mean that the parent company sold 40 and that means that the parent company then retained 40 percent retained 40 percent so if it retained 40 percent then it means that this company which was initially a subsidiary then it becomes what an associate becomes an associate and therefore uh, in the first six months the parent company you can see had 80 percent shareholding meaning that this company was therefore a subsidiary and then after selling half the parent company retained 40 percent meaning that in the last six months that company was what was an associate was an associate so how do we go about in this case or how do we prepare the group account in such type of uh, a, a partial disposal number one when preparing the consolidated statement of a profit or loss in preparing the consolidated statement of profit or loss number one we have to compute the gain or loss on disposal we have to compute the gain or loss on disposal of interest of uh, interest of which this particular gain if it's a gain it is recognized as an in, in the income statement as an income if it is a loss it is recognized as an expense number two number two we then consolidate consolidate the results the results of uh, the subsidiary subsidiary company company up to date of disposal up to date of disposal up to date of disposal like in this case um in preparing the consolidated income statement we're going to take into account the revenue and expenses of b for the first six months when it was a a subsidiary and then in the last six months because it was an associate you have to recall that we don't include the revenue and expenses of associate in the consolidated uh, income statement so we that's why we are saying consolidate it result up to the date of disposal and uh, thereafter 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 uh, thereafter uh, uh, include include group share group a uh, share lower uh, its profit after tax and that is in accordance with equity method and that is in accordance with is 28 because as far as the associate is concerned uh, we include or uh, what we include in the consolidated income statement is the group share or the parent company share of its profit after tax so mean that you'll take the profit after tax of this uh, company here which is always given in its income statement multiply that with six all over 12 so that you get now the profit after tax for the last six months when it was an associate and then multiply that with the parent company shareholding in b which is 40 percent 40 percent so that's basically how we prepare that and then how do we prepare the consolidated uh consolidated statement of uh, consolidated statement of financial position consolidated statement of uh, financial uh, position so in preparing the consolidated statement of financial position our interest is basically the status of this company at the end of the year so what will be the status of the investee company at the end of the year at the end of the year the investee company that is b will be an associate and therefore uh, in accordance with the equity method um, what we include in the consolidated statement of financial position as far as the associate is concerned is something called the investment in associate we don't include or we don't combine the asset and liabilities of the parent and those of the associate in preparing the consolidated statement of financial uh, position so therefore in preparing this we say a uh, compute the investment investment in uh, associate investment in associate or uh, joint arrangement joint arrangement and uh, included included in consolidated statement of financial position as 
a non-current asset. So in that case, you compute or we compute something called the investment in associate or investment in joint arrangement and we include that in the consolidated statement of a financial position as a non-current asset. So how do we compute this particular investment uh, in associate or joint uh, arrangement? So investment in associate or uh, joint arrangement. So this one is computed using this uh, approach here or this uh, format. So number one, we take the fair value of uh, investment which has been retained fair value of investment retained so the investment which has been retained here is 40 percent and basically we have said that in case of a partial disposal the, the investment which has been retained uh, always will have to be revalued to its fair value on the date of a uh, disposal that figure is, will always be provided to you so you'll be told that the investment which has been retained uh, on the date of disposal had this fair value that what you use here and then to this we add the group share the group share of uh, post acquisition post acquisition net assets post acquisition net assets and uh, whatever you get here is now what you refer to as the investment in associate investment in joint arrangement and you're saying that that should be taken to the consolidated statement of financial position as one of the item of the non-current what uh, asset yes so basically those are uh, different uh, scenarios of uh, partial disposal and basically how we deal with them specifically in preparing the consolidated uh, financial what uh, statement so basically that's what you need to know uh, i want us we stop at that particular point once we come back in our next session uh, i want us we look on an illustration question regarding how to uh, prepare the group accounts and also how to compute the gain or loss on disposal uh, in case of uh, disposal of interest so see you in the next session Thank you.